Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to Nightline. Uh, I am uh, Pastor Bob Shear. I pastor a little church out the road up by Highway 25 called New Liberty Baptist Church. I, I teach full-time at North Greenville University uh, in the School of Business and Sports Management. Somebody asked me the other day, Pastor Bob, when are you going to retire? I'm 75 years old. Somebody, The Bible says it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And I just discovered, hey, if Jesus is alive in me and that's not me, then whenever Jesus decides to retire, I'm going to retire. Can I get an amen out there someplace? Because I know we got some retirees, some senior saints out there. Listen, there's a whole lot more for us to do. We got to stick in there. God's got a big plan for your life and for mine. But we welcome you tonight, tonight line. The scripture tonight taken from John's gospel, chapter 14, verses 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, Jesus said. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Hey, listen, friends, that passage right there, I know we read it a lot at funerals, but that passage right there could be uh, read at a wedding ceremony. You know why? Because that was what was happening at a wedding ceremony. What happens is the bridegroom tells her, his father that he's going to marry this bride, and the bridegroom's father says, son, you've got to come home. You've got to come home and get a place ready for your bride. And that's what that's all about. Jesus is saying... I am the bridegroom, and he's talking to those of us who are watching tonight and here at Channel 16. We are the bride, the bride of Christ, and the bridegroom has gone home to prepare a place for us. And so one day, the father's going to say, son, the house is ready. Your bride is ready. Go get her, son. And Jesus is going to come back for his bride. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready tonight? I hope so. Tonight, somehow, sometime during this program, somebody out there is going to say, I want to give my life to Jesus. He loves me so much, and I want to surrender my life to him. Now, you may get that word tonight because of something someone says. On the other hand, it may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you tonight in ways that only your heart could understand. And that's because sometimes God uses words that are actually wordless. The Holy Spirit will speak to you tonight, I know. Crown of Thorns is our musical group tonight, and they're going to sing the song, Wordless.
isn't any fear in love. Ooh. Well, amen. Amen. I tell you what, uh, the name of the group is uh, a crown of thorns, but I tell you what, uh, they are singing so sweet tonight. Rick, thank you very much. You're, you, and you brought some really sweet voices with you. My goodness. Uh, y'all, uh, wonderful, wonderful group. Hannah and Taylor, y'all are just beautiful. And uh, just the, the heart is so clear there. I want to, before we introduce our first guest, our primary guest tonight, I want to thank you all for already calling in so many prayer requests. And, and we're going to pray right now and ask the Lord to bless those who've actually, some of you have emailed the requests in already, but we want to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we lift up each of these requests. You know them, Father. You know them by name. You know exactly where they live. You know what they're going through. You know the opportunities for your kingdom that are in each of these lives. And we stand with Jesus who came that they might have an abundant life. And whatever the enemy is trying to do, rob and kill and destroy, but he is only prowling around like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. And in Jesus' name, Satan, we command you to release all of these people. You have no right to them. They're bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, tonight we believe you for healing, for deliverance. We believe you for salvation. We believe you, Father, for your kingdom to come, your will to be done, and each of these who are viewing this program tonight for what they're going to hear, for what they're going to experience. Father, in advance, by faith, we give you glory in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Folks, please call in. This is a night that could change your life. Jesus Christ is ready for you to be his brother and through him to be a child of God. You come tonight. Call us. We'd love to talk to you, pray with you. We're here for you. This is about you. This isn't about us. We're here for you because that's what the Lord has called us to do for you tonight. God bless you. Well, we have a wonderful guest tonight. She is going to be our guest our whole first hour tonight. Um, I, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of impressed because my son's a book publisher, and and. <laughs> Robin Berkeley, she is a, an author, and she has got several really wonderful books that I've, I've had the privilege of at least looking through, uh, but I, I didn't realize who was going to be on until it was too late to actually get to read a whole book. But I'm going to tell you what, what I have seen in just skimming and scanning the books the, the heart of what you do. Robin Bertram, thank you for coming thank to be you. with us tonight. Thank Lord bless you. you. Um, it's an honor. <laughs> and, and I know you're here to share with us the first of your, or this, this newest release, I should say, that's going to be released, um, I think around August 8th mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. And we want to hear primarily about that, but we don't want to jump the gun here. We want to hear a little bit about you and lay a little foundation because I know a lot of what you've written over the years has come out of your own personal walk with the Lord. Tell us a, a little bit about, about Robin Bertram. What is, uh, what is your life? What has it been like? <laughs> Pastor Bob, thank you for asking and thank yeah. you for the opportunity well, we to be here you. with We're you. Glad thank you're you. Here. Um, you know, what you said is so true. Everything that I write, Pastor, comes out of a place of my own experiences, my own hurts, my own struggles. Um, the Lord has really taught me a lot about walking with Him over the last 30 plus years. Well, that's the last 30 plus years. But you, for heaven's sakes, I mean, <laughs> you grew up in a, in a Christian home. I mean, you had a preacher for a father yes. and all of that. Uh, didn't that just take care of everything? Uh, no, it did not. It didn't. No kidding. <laughs> you know, 
know, I loved, I, I loved being a pastor's daughter. Um, but that being said, we have struggles just like everyone else. I was saved at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. I remember I was at Watermelon Park in, Rona, uh, in Virginia. Mm -hmm. And um, as a young girl, I received the Lord as, as, as my Savior. And, but that didn't um, take all of the problems away. So the struggles that I had through my early uh, life, um, I really had to spend time with the Lord. And through that process, He started to build in me confidence in His Word that you can't get from someone else. You have to get it for yourself. And so uh, as a young girl, the Lord really started to teach me about listening to his voice. Now, what you're saying is you, you can't, even though you're a pastor's daughter, you don't get your relationship with God because you're a pastor's daughter, because you're hearing the gospel every day and, and you're seeing it walked out in front of you. That's not to say that, that being a, a child of a pastor doesn't have its advantages in the sense of you, you do at least get to hear about the Lord, but, but you, don't become, you don't become a child of God because you're a child of a preacher. Absolutely. And that's very important, just like you're not a Christian because you go to church. Right. Um, it's, it's about a personal relationship with the mm -hmm. Lord. And, and it, it's birthed in your willingness to receive Him. Mm -hmm. So I, I look back at my life and I'm so thankful for my father, who was a pastor, uh, we were blessed growing up going to hymn sings and, and tent meetings, and we were in church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, and whenever the doors were open, we were there. But, but it wasn't until I really started to search the scriptures for myself that I, that I gained an understanding. Um, and so it started to change my life. Even as early as 16, I remember just going through, through the scriptures, reading through the Bible on my own, and it really started to solidify the truth in my heart. Well, I think a lot of people think that just because you got saved, I thought I, thought I got born again. Now, what happened? I, 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 I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Why am I going through these, these the, what do I have to, the hassles of everyday <laughs> life? Why, what happened? And, and I think people think, well, well, if you got born again, that means your soul got born again. Well, the truth of the matter is your spirit is what got born again. Your mind, your will, your emotions. The, the Apostle Paul is writing to, to, to people who are already believers when he's writing to the church at Rome. And he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your lives a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reason. And be... Don't, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Here it is. Now, I'll listen to yes. this. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Your mind didn't get born again. <laughs> Your mind didn't get, your spirit got born again, but your mind has to be renewed. And that's what we're talking about yes. now, your word of God. Now, something happened in your life and you kind of fell in love with the holy, the word of God, didn't yes, you? Yes, absolutely. I remember um, as a young woman, I went through a, a really traumatic time of struggling with panic attacks. Mm. And, uh, about how old would that um, have been? Early 30s, okay. early 30s. You, you already had a couple children? Uh, yes, point? yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Pastor, I remember, I remember thinking the same thing. I thought this was supposed yeah, to be easy. <laughs> I'm supposed to be born again, a new creature in Christ. Old things have it's, passed away. Yes, What's the deal here? Yes, but I remember sitting down and, and going through the scriptures and the Lord just highlighting perfect love casts out fear. Uh -huh. And when, when I read that, I remember thinking, I should not be experiencing fear because it's not of God. Right. And that was really revelation to me. And let me explain why. Because as a young woman, as a young child even, I thought that fear was a part of my personality. Mm -hmm. Satan had tricked me in thinking that I was just timid. I was just, you know, nervous type of person. And it was not until that scripture took root in my heart that I realized I didn't have to walk in fear. I didn't have to walk in anxiety because it was not of God. Well, and you, that's it, revelational. Well, it is. It is. And you talked about 
uh, the enemy has sown something into your mind about you're weak, you're, you're a fearful person, yes. you're not strong, you can't do anything, you always have to hide out or make excuses or apologize and all those things. When the fact of the matter is those are strongholds that the enemy has set up in our minds yes. And the Bible says, we don't wage war the way the world does, but our weapons are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. When the enemy has set up those strongholds in our minds about how, how lazy we are, how bad we are, how about never going to amount to anything, or we can't do anything, or we got this spirit of fear, yes. those are strongholds. But the, these, these are in the minds even of Christians. We have the power in the name of Jesus, in the person of the Holy Spirit, to tear down those strongholds. You have some strongholds tonight? You're watching us tonight? Call in. Ask our prayer warriors to pray with you, and in the name of Jesus, they'll tear down those strongholds that you've been living with. You thought that was the way it had to be for the rest of your life. No. You're a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Greater is he who's in you. What a great testimony. Tell us more. Tell us more. <laughs> It was beautiful, Pastor, because as I said, I, I really didn't realize it was a stronghold. I didn't realize that it was anything but my personality. Yeah. And it was only by the power of the Holy Spirit, the, by revelation, Robert, this is not the way you're supposed to live. And Pastor, had I not been seeking the Lord, had I not been praying about this issue, I could have spent my entire life walking in fear and anxiety. I mean, I, it was to the point where if I would take an aspirin, I thought I would die. Mm. I mean, I, I was fearful of going outside. I couldn't speak in a group or a crowd um, of people. I felt very uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, my college, when I, I went to Radford University. In Virginia. And, in mm -hmm. Virginia. And one of the um, tests to graduate is you had to do a, a class of uh, public speaking. Oh. And I had to speak uh, oh. for my final exam. I almost left that class mm. that day. Mm. And I remember praying, God, you have to get me through this because I want to graduate. <laughs> oh my goodness. And so even in college, I was struggling with this issue and uh, I did make it through and I did graduate. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Lord. But, but you know, um, when the Lord really showed me, this is not his nature. Mm -mm. If it's not his nature, it's not our nature. And if it's not his nature, it's not his will. It's not his will. And we're new creatures in Christ. Old things we're have passed new away. Creatures. All things have become new. <laughs> yes. So when that scripture took root, and I remember the freedom yes. that I felt, yes. it was overwhelming, the freedom mm. that I felt. Mm. And the panic attacks stopped. Wow. They completely completely stopped. Wow. It was an instantaneous healing by the power of the Holy Spirit by revelation In the Word of, of God, Scripture, through the Word of God. Through the Word of yes. God. Yes. So if you've got a Bible at home, don't just let it sit there gathering dust on the, ta the, the table there in the living room or by your nightstand. Open the Word of God. The Word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword. You talk about pulling down those strongholds, that's what the Word of God's going to do for you tonight. Uh, I tell you, Robin's got so much more, and we haven't even gotten into her <laughs> book. I mean, it's Hidden Treasures. That's the name of the book, and it's going to be an amazing story. You're going to get to hear a little bit more about it in just a bit. But I want you to make sure you call in. Um, we have the prayer warriors. We need to be praying, and that's the ministry here at Nightline on Channel 16. We're here simply to let you know that you, we have the resources in God through the pulling down of your strongholds, whatever they are, but it's going to be done because we come into the presence of the Lord, and that's what Crown of Thorns are going to sing about right now.
too much to give But he can open any door Everybody knows the secret Everybody knows the score of the Lord I have finally found a way to pray like I never could before I know I don't have too much The presence of the Lord, and that's uh, that's if you want uh, to come into the Lord's presence, you can do that even tonight. But uh, the Son of God said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." If you want to come into the Father's presence, you've got to come through me. And now many people say there are many ways to come to God, and the truth of the matter is there are many ways to come to God. In fact, everybody's going to come to God someday. The only question is, do you want God to be your judge, or do you want Him to be your Father? Again, many ways to come to God. Do you want Him to be your judge? Do you want Him to be your Father? When you come into his presence, I assure you, and you can come into his presence tonight if you'll allow Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, to become your sacrifice, the sacrifice for your sins. Receive Jesus as your Lord. He will become your Savior. You become a child of God, and now you can come boldly into the throne of grace to receive help for the strongholds in your life at the point of your need.
You can do that tonight. And we're here, and we've got a sweet Robin. Robin Bertram is with us tonight, and we, we are so grateful that God's brought you to us tonight, Robin. And uh, our viewers are going to hear uh, now about your new book. But before you get to that, tell us a little bit about the process of coming to be an author, some of the other books you've written, kind of leading up to this. How did all of that happen? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> Um, you know, Pastor, the Lord so directs our steps when we allow Him, mm -hmm. when we're willing to listen. And I remember uh, my first book, probably 10 years plus, um, the Lord really prompted me to write a book about deliverance ministry because of what I had experienced, the freedom that I found in Christ. Um, I really felt I wanted to share that with people because so many people have gone through hardships and they don't realize they can be free. It's what you said. It's a choice mm -hmm. if you allow the Holy Spirit to do the work in you. Now you have to be born again. You have to be a child Absolutely. of God before the Holy Spirit can live in you. But even after that, you have the choice to make to allow Jesus to live or to for you to live. If yes. you let Jesus live, then the Holy Spirit's able to do these things. Yes. Yeah, so um, one of my first books was um, uh, Shadows Among Us. And I really delve into the darkness that's in our hearts that we don't even realize is there at times. Uh, we all have areas of weakness that if we're not careful, they can control our lives. Like fear was a controlling factor in my life. And so when I, when I sat down to write that book, I, I spent two and a half years writing that book um, because I wanted to put in it everything that anyone would need to know. I bet prayer is a big part oh, of this. Oh my goodness, prayer is everything. Prayer is everything. And without prayer, there is no change. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. you have to cry out to God um, even to start the process. You have to be willing to seek those answers from God. And you start with prayer. And so I wrote uh, Shadows Among Us to help families and, and individuals learn how to walk in the freedom that Jesus died for. He gave us freedom. Um, and then, so I, I wrote that book and then I, I did a workbook to go along with that book. I did about 15 other self-published books because mm -hmm. each one of them individual Bible studies. I love Bible studies mm -hmm. because I think uh, we as a society, even in the church, we are um, deficient of studying the Word. You know, we like to go on Sunday morning and be fed the Word, but our victory comes when we take the time on our own to delve into the Word of God. So Bible studies are really important to me, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on on the year to come. In fact, the, the Word of God says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman. By rightly dividing the Word of Truth, it's up to us to study, to show our... It's not up to the preacher to give yes. us... We're to study ourselves to show ourselves approved. That's how we grow. Not to... not. It's not works righteousness, but we, we have a way of discovering how we can be all God wants us to be, but we can't if we don't study to show ourselves. And if we don't study, we have no concept of the promises that God has exactly. given us. Exactly. If you don't have a promise to stand on, what can you possibly pray about? I mean, God has so laid it all out for us. He's given us all of the uh, precepts that we need, all of the promises that we need to live the abundant life that Jesus promised us. It's up to us. And it's and it's up to us, but we can trust the Father's love. Yes. We can yes. trust the Father's love. And that's the title of one of your other books, yes. The Father's yes. Love. Absolutely. We talked about that just a minute ago. Do you want God to be your Father? Yes. I mean, that's what we want. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the Father's I, love. Well, I love that because it's, it's really a Bible study at so many times um, people will look at God uh, from the distorted image of their own earthly father. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you have a father who has been harsh 
or difficult or unloving, then oftentimes we tend to see God the Father in the same light. Mm. And so we distance ourselves from God the Father. But in that study, The Father's Love, I focus on um, teaching through scripture that God is the perfect father Mm -hmm. and our earthly fathers are just a shadow of what they should be. Mm -hmm. They are to reflect God Um, Mm -hmm. and when they don't then we get that distorted image. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a matter of realizing how we see God as uh, through our own distortions. Mm -hmm. Um, God is the perfect loving Father. And once we realize that, then, and we realize that our fathers fall short, just like we all fall short Mm -hmm. of the glory of God and we're not perfect, then we can look beyond. I remember a time when my dad I wrote my dad a letter and asked him to forgive me because I had harbored in my heart um, anger I didn't even realize I had. It was so deep-seated because Christians don't get angry. (laughs) Especially (laughs) preacher's kids. Preacher's kids do not get angry. No, no, not at their father, the (laughs) preacher, for heaven's sake. Yes, so I buried this uh, hidden resentment uh, towards my own father. Mm -hmm. And when in prayer, in my prayer closet, mm. the Lord showed me, Robin, you've got to let this go. So he, he in, prompted me to write a letter to my father. When I wrote the letter, I asked my father to forgive me wow. of harboring that hidden resentment. And my dad called me and he said, Robin, I don't understand. You know, I don't understand. And I said, Dad, you don't have to. Will you just forgive me? And he said, oh, of course I will. <laughs> And pastor, from that day forward, our relationship changed radically. Mm. We were like best of best friends. Mm. And I, I just treasured our relationship. And when I did that, God the Father became clearer to The me. Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father. Mm. And mm. I viewed Him as the perfect Father. Mm-hmm. And I viewed my Father as a, a, a man who... He was, he was not perfect. He was pretty close, but mm-hmm. <laughs> he was a good man. He was a, a good, loving father. But I viewed him differently when I made the, took the time to write that letter. Amen. And so I share that in the book because it's so vitally important that we have a clear picture of God. Um, and women do it too. You know, women, women and men, they will uh, look at their mothers or their fathers and have this distorted image and it, not even understanding what love means. Mm-hmm. God is love. Yeah, and and sometimes when we think of our fathers, our, our earthly fathers, there's a time in our life where we have to live our life on our own. Now the question is, who's in charge? Yes. I mean, now now <laughs> w- w- our, our earthly father may not even be around anymore. Where do we go now? Who's in charge? Is, isn't that another <laughs> book that you wrote? Yes, you did pay attention. Okay, all right. <laughs> And Who's in Charge is very, um, um, it's a beautiful Bible study that helps the individuals understand true submission and true authority. That's a word we don't like, submission. Mm -hmm. We don't like it. But when you fall in line with the perfectly order, uh, the order that God places in a family, in a home, in a church, when you come under that kind of leadership, there's safety in that. Mm -hmm. Um, You learn to obey. You learn to obey out of respect and love. Love and respect for God first. Amen. And then for your husband or then for your parents. And when you do learn that kind of obedience, uh, there's such safety and peace. There's peace that passes understanding. You really um, start to find joy again because mm. you're in proper order. And you're discovering God is a things. God of order. Absolutely. You're discovering things that you wouldn't be able to know otherwise other than the Holy Spirit. We've only got a few minutes left in this segment, but I want you to introduce, we talk about the, the hidden things of life that you're discovering now as you're on your own and you're walking through life and it's not your father or anything like that. And now it's you and God. What about the hidden treasures? This is the new book that's going to be released shortly. Yes. Give us a minute or two about it, and then we'll sure. we'll take a break and we'll come back. Okay. This pastor, this is probably the most important thing I've done to date for the Lord. I remember so clearly ten years ago, 
uh, being at an altar in Burlington, North Carolina. And when I, after prayer time, and I stood up from that altar, and the Lord gave me three visions of three people that I had walked with their families through some very difficult times. And the Lord showed me these three people, and in my heart, He gave me the title, He gave me the understanding. Robin, I want you to write everything you learned through walking with these families during their darkest, most difficult days of life. Are they mostly the end of their life? It was, a, it was a young child okay. um, who faced terminal illness. Oh, okay. It was um, a middle-aged man who had four children under the age of 12. And it was a senior, a, um, a man in his He had four children. Years. Did he have a wife? He did, yes, okay. and a wife. But the man, what was his struggle? What he was he also had, all three had um, very terminal. rare terminal cancer. Ah. And I was blessed to walk with each of those families. And the lessons that I learned radically changed my life. Mm. And, Hidden treasures. and the lessons that you learned radically changed in the sense of you discovered something. Yes. These lessons were something you've discovered yes. in the process of working with these folks who yes. are going through this terminal time in their life. Yes. A, a, a young child, a father of four, and then who was the... A senior. A senior adult. Yes. So you yes. had all three. <laughs> yeah. My goodness, God yes. just open up a door for you. Yes. I, I don't know really where to go. We, we're going to have uh, another segment to come back, but we need to discover uh, how to help people um, process. Uh, this is life. This isn't just death. This is another yes. part of life. Absolutely. How do we help them discover what life is? At this, in these kind of conditions, is all about. Yes. Uh, did you have anybody help you with this? Uh, I, oh, you did some studying in university, I didn't did. you? Have some. I did. You had some training teaching, yes. Yes. but you took the word that you learned at the university, but then put it with the word, yes. the scriptures, <laughs> yes. and the Holy Spirit was able to give you insight. Yes. Uh, give us a little bit about the child. We've got about a minute okay. left. Okay. Um, this precious child. Um, was terminal and he would call me two and three o'clock in the morning, will you come pray? It, it was amazing to watch a young child have so much faith that that he just needed comfort and peace. And his, and his how old was he? He was 11. 11. 11 We've years got old. to go and we'll come back. I want to hear more about this. But he asked you to come and pray. 11 yes. year old child, yes. knowing that this stage in his life, he needs somebody to come and pray yes. with him. And he invited you to come. Yes. Well, uh, the crown of thorns, it just so happens, is going to be singing a song that some of you out there uh, may want to have God speaking to you because he's inviting you to come to the table. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. He says, 
To the doubter, to the hero and the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead. thorns come to the table and that's the invitation tonight to you um, the word of God in Hebrews in chapter 4 we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens Jesus the son of God let us hold fast our confession many of you are holding fast to your confession that Jesus Christ is your savior because he is your Lord, and according to the word of God, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, to the table. Come boldly. You're not coming as a sinner now. You're coming as a child of God. You're not a sinner. You're a bought, blood-bought child of God. Come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help in your time of need. We have people here tonight a husband has left. A strength is needed for a sibling. A man, his kidney is, is malfunctioning and needs to be healed. Having a biopsy on Wednesday. There are people tonight, you're right now asking God, your father, come boldly asking him. You're not a sinner. You're a child of God. If you've surrendered your life to the high priest, his name is Jesus Christ. He is the son of God. He is your Lord. He is your savior. Trust him tonight. Come boldly to the throne of grace. 
Robin, would you lay hands on this? Could I pray for us now tonight? Robin is going to pray with us. Lord, in Jesus' name, we speak for all of these who are coming boldly to your throne tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. They're not coming as sinners. They are blood-bought children of the living God. They are your children, Father, and in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, you touch each one of these. Meet their needs according to their glorious riches that they have stored up for them through Jesus Christ, Father, your riches, may they be healed tonight in Jesus' name. May their family be reunited in Jesus' name. May their liver biopsy come back beautiful, clean in Jesus' name. Every one of these requests, we stand against the enemy who will come to rob, but he has no life in him. He brings death. Jesus, you're the one who brings the abundant life. And we declare it for each one of these requests tonight. May it happen for them tonight, Father, in Jesus' name, by your Holy Spirit. And we say amen. 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 All right, now, what we just prayed, this is what hidden treasure is all about. A lot of us have treasures in our lives in Christ, but they're hidden. we're, We're not able to use them. How is it that we get to know about these things? Pastor, I just love, I love your, um, prayer because we are to come boldly. So many families, and this is why why I believe the Lord prompted me to write this book. This book addresses all kinds of issues. It's it's about the divorcee whose whose family has just been torn apart. It's about the one suffering with illness. It's about the person who doesn't know where to go because they've never had direction in their life. Uh, What people need, they need to understand, Pastor, God is there. He hears, He knows, and He cares. Mm. And I think that that is the hidden treasure. We, We so often think, when we're in the middle of a crisis, we often think that we're alone that nobody cares. Mm. Um, some, I, I watch these families. I watch these families and they all had the same question. What are we going to do now? How are we going to survive this time of struggle? Uh, where are we going to get help? And it was really amazing as I, as I watched these families go through such traumatic times. Pastor, the hidden treasure is God is there with them mm-hmm. every day every moment of every day. And he leaves these little gifts of love for us when we're in the darkest hour of our lives. And so I really encourage the reader, first of all, um, to look inward because we have treasures, just like you said, God has given us hidden treasures. We have gifts that we've been spiritual given. Gifts. Spiritual gifts. If you're saved, the Holy Spirit's alive in you. You've got spiritual yes. gifts. Yes. And those gifts, it, sometimes it takes a time to understand what those gifts are. And once we understand what those gifts are, then we have to walk in boldness and use those gifts. So that's that's the first part of the book. I, I encourage the reader to look inward. What treasure has God given you? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and sometimes we have to uh, we have to look inside to see what God is doing in our own hearts first. Mm. And then the second part of the book is about looking outward because in the midst of every struggle, whether it is divorce or sickness or a loss of a job or an estranged child. So there's a lot of terminal kinds of things, not just terminal illness, but terminal relationships, yes. terminal jobs, terminal this, that, or the other thing. So we're all facing difficult terminal kind of experiences in our lives. Yes, absolutely. And during those days of darkness, that's when God wants us to delve into him, to trust him, to trust his sovereignty. What are we going to do? We're going to trust God in the midst of this and know that he is working all things together for our good and his glory, because just as the we, scripture says. Because we trust him and because we are the called according to his promise, according to his will. We are the called, we are his children. Now, if you're, if you're not a child of God, 
this is not for you. It doesn't mean God doesn't want it to be for you. But again, you can come to God in many different ways. But do you want him to be your judge and he's sitting out there in the darkness just waiting for you to go through your life and now he's going to judge you? Or do you want him to be your father? The only way he can be your father is if you receive his son Jesus Christ as your savior. And that's a, that happens because you receive him as your Lord. But then if he is your Lord, now Jesus has brought you to the father. You can come to the father and he now is going to do things for you that you cannot do for yourself, and the enemy does not any longer have power over you. Absolutely. I wrote in the book, uh, one of the chapters is Foundations, and I took time to write uh, for the, the reader to understand, if we don't have a solid foundation in Jesus, we have nothing, nothing to else. stand nothing on else. during our time of struggle. Mm -hmm. And so I, I walked the reader, um, years ago, my husband and I, we love to go look at homes. Mm -hmm. And that was that's just a hobby that we have. Um, we had found a home for sale in a, in a magazine, a realtor's magazine, and it was just this incredible incredibly good price for this gorgeous home. Mm -hmm. So he and I decided to take a ride. We drove about two hours from our home in North Carolina and we, um, we drove up to this home that was for sale and it was on a hill. It had big beautiful windows. It had a winding uh, driveway going up and I thought we have just found our dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we go in and we, we started walking through the rooms and the rooms were big and spacious and big open windows. And, but I started to notice that there were some black, t tiny little black spots on the wall. And I thought, well, that paint, you know, we can put some paint over that, no big deal. And we walked into other rooms and more black spots. And Finally, I stopped and I said to the realtor, I said, what in the world is this? Because these spots are everywhere. And she said, well, when the home was first built, it was not built on a proper foundation. Mm, mm. So this gorgeous, beautiful home was literally disintegrating mm. because it had been built on a faulty foundation. Mm, mm. And pastor, how many times do we build our lives on a faulty foundation? Yeah. We don't understand God the Father. We don't understand born again. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took time to explain that we must be born again born of the Spirit. And if we are, then we start to build our foundation on the Word of God, which gives us direction and peace in the time of our struggles. And and it's at those times where we discover the treasures that have been there all along, yes. but we didn't know they were there until we were born again. And then the Holy Spirit can show us what God had planned all along. We've only got a couple of minutes left. And I, and I really want you to be able to say, Robin, what if, if our viewers ha are to hear something that you must tell them about their life. All of us are going through these terminal times, difficult times. What would they need to know the most in order to get through those times? I wrote one of the chapters is um, um, a pearl of great price. And I think everyone needs to know most that God cares about them mm -hmm. in the midst of their struggles. Because it is a time when you feel so alone. I mean, I know I went through a health challenge where I was, there was potential that I could live two years and the Lord miraculously touched me. Mm. And that was four and a half years ago. And during that time, I remember how I felt. It's a very dark, scary time, but God showed me little signs along the way that let me know that he was hearing my prayers, that he cared about my hurts. He, he was concerned about what I was concerned about. And so if you, if you have to uh, go through a struggle, knowing Jesus is the most important thing yeah. you can do. And that's got to be the key for all of us it is at the, key. the end of life's journeys, whatever there may be a lot of different kinds of ends, terminal times in our lives, 
but knowing that Jesus Christ is the one. And your book, Hidden Treasures, Finding Hope at the End of Life's Journey, is what we need to hear. Yes. Robin, thank you so much for coming to be with us tonight. I know our viewers have been blessed greatly for your being here. Please come back. I know you live just down the road down there uh, in Bluffton. Uh, come back and see us Thanks. again sometime very soon, will you? I'd love uh, it. We love you. We thank you. You're, you're a very anointed woman of God, and uh, we're very proud of what God's done in you. God bless you. Come back and see I us. And you come back in just a few moments. We'll be right back. Nightline. Thank you.